Hello, welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker and welcome back this week. And the team at Digital Farm TV is delighted to say g'day also to friends of the countryman.com.au in Western Australia. In an exciting new content sharing alliance, your agriculture and agribusiness bulletin and selected features will appear weekly on this popular website with plans for increased engagement in the future. Watch this space. The Australian wheat industry's evolution to become a deregulated export marketer has been a success if record-breaking results over recent years were any indication. That was the logic put forward by Grain Trade Australia CEO Jeff Honey at an International Grains Council conference in London last week. During the past four years, the Australian industry had seen record wheat production, record shipping, record growth in container exports and a swing into new markets. Historically, the Middle East had been the major market for Australian wheat, but Asia now accounted for 70% of exports, up from 30% in 2008. Australian beef and veal exports for May surged into uncharted territory, exceeding the previous monthly high and breaking through 100,000 tonnes for the first time. According to the Federal Agriculture Department, exports for the month totaled 103,207 tonnes, 19% above the corresponding month last year. Historically, high beef production stoked the boom. The average weekly eastern state slaughter during April and May was up 18% year on year with more than 137,000 and more than 157,000 head per week, respectively. Still in the good news department, the Weather Bureau reports that the chances of above median winter rainfall over a broad area of Australia are at 60 to 70%. Such odds meant that for every 10 years with similar climate patterns, about six or seven years would be expected to be wetter than average. Almost a third of Western Australia's farmers say they face foreclosure if they have a poor harvest this year, according to a major new survey. The result reflects the banking sector's move to take a harder line on soaring debt, reports the West Australia newspaper. More than 40% of the 399 broadacre farmers surveyed were not confident about their viability, with confidence rock bottom among 14%. Some farmers had done all they could to stay in the game after favourable rainfall. Western Australian intensive livestock producers have been urged to step up security after reports of trespass by animal rights activists seeking to capture video of allegedly inhumane on-farm management. Western Australian Pork Producers Association's Russell Cox said industry members had alerted police about illegally obtained sow stall video from a Western Australian piggery on Animal Amnesty's website. The video files provided a clearly misleading view of the farm's practices and they appear to have been doctored, he said. The unnamed piggery's facilities have been independently assessed by the Western Australian Government's Livestock Compliance Unit and were given a clean bill of health. The Digital Farm TV team is travelling to the New England District of New South Wales between June 26 and 28 to attend the Digital Rural Futures 2013 Smart Farms Smart Region Summit. This important conference at the University of New England is described as a national forum to raise awareness of and promote discussion about Australian farm producers' digital future. We look forward to bringing you in-depth news, interviews and analysis from our best technology gurus in July. Finally this week, global agricultural production is expected to slow to 1.5% a year on average over the coming decade compared with annual growth of 2.1% between 2003 and 2012. So says a new report published by the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development and the Food and Agriculture Organisation. Limited expansion of agricultural land, rising production costs, growing resource constraints and increasing environmental pressures are the main factors behind the trend. Well, that's it for Digital Farm TV Rural News this week. I look forward to your company again next week. I'm Andy Walker.